Mary Sykes that are here from AbleNet. Happy to be with you here today. We're going to talk about ideas for distance learning. So let's go ahead and we're going to <clears throat> share the screen. Here we have a There we go. You guys should be seeing the AbleNet presentation and you should be seeing a poll. So what I'd like you to do is go ahead and let me know who's in the audience today. It'll take a brief moment. Please take some time, grab that mouse, go ahead. I see a lot of you are doing that. Thanks so much. And then I'm gonna go ahead and close that in a moment. And then we're gonna find out who's with us here today. So far in the lead are our special educators. And coming up to a second is going to be our speech language pathologist, but our paraprofessionals are running very close to that as well. So glad to see everybody here today. And there's a number others of you coming. All right. I am going to go ahead and close that down in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, so let's share the results. You should be able to see that we have a number of our special educators here with us today. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you can see everyone else that are your colleagues that are interested in this content. So welcome and thanks so much. I'm gonna go ahead and shut that down. And it should not be on your screen anymore. If it is for some reason, please note that you can take it down from your screen yourself, I believe. And if not, Deb's going to come on and let you know. So questions in the chat field, please. Um, they go to Deb. I'm going to be taking questions afterwards if there's time. If not, I will be responding to you after the session. Our objectives today are going to be to explain why active engagement is critical to the success of students in the life skills classroom. We're going to list specific times of day or by the end of the session, you should be able to list specific times of day that you would like to think about adding technology to increase student communication, and then really thinking about your lesson planning. So throughout, you should be thinking about how do you plan your lessons that take into account integrating technology per activity and per student. Those of you that have um, attended my webinars before or have met me before know that I am a former special education teacher with a background of assistive technology as well. So I bring to you some interesting pieces and theories and philosophies about how we interact and work with our students. So our beliefs at AbleNet is that all of our students should be considered readers, writers, mathematicians, and scientists. Um, we want to connect them to real world content. We want them to connect them to real experiences. In that, and saying that, it doesn't always look the same as our um, counterpart peers. So we need to think about that belief system that we go forward on and the belief system that we um, are dealing with under what conditions is this possible? So when we have students that we say um, they can't do it, rather than saying they can't, we say, how can they? And especially in this time of distance learning, our students are at home. So how can they be an active member? How can they participate? That's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna deal with ideas for not only using easy tech at home, but also at school. So you're gonna have a variety of ideas to keep you excited about being back in the classroom is where we all wanna be. But if we're not, or if you have students that aren't, then you're gonna be able to roll away with some ideas as well. And I stole this from another person. So I was doing some research online and I thought um, this just makes, um, it states exactly what I feel. We need right now to give our students a sense of normalcy. We need to keep them active, engaged, and moving forward so that when we do get back to school, it is a smooth transition back to the classroom. And that's my goal for you today is to take away those ideas. So let's think about how we start with that. We can think about what are the times of day that we work with our students and at school? What are the goals that we have? And of course, this is just a, a high level, what we would do at each one of these times. And what are we gonna do now at home? How can we make this connect to home? Well, it really is about considering what materials you were able to send home, right? Or the objects in the home that a student can use. So we need to be really in direct communication with those parents. We can think about these predictable times of day and then also add these into what lessons we can create and or working on our IEP goals, structure for home, and then also add some functional opportunities as well. So let's start right out with from the time of day that we walk into the classroom, we work on greetings. So uh, throughout, the pro or throughout the session, I'm gonna talk about products. I'm gonna name the product, give you a little information, 
Um, again, if you have questions, we can definitely take this offline afterwards. But what you're seeing here is the talking bricks. If you um, think about this particular product, it has a magnet in the back, so you don't need Velcro. You could Velcro any product here. You could even have the paraprofessional holding the product. So again, under what conditions is this possible for your student? Um, walk forward with me on this journey with that in mind. So we have the device. We would have a high symbol on it. The paraprofessional would record a different greeting each day. All the students would be able to come in and say hello in some form or fashion, thereby starting communication right at the door. Behind the door are the other two devices that come in this package because it's a set of three. Now we can ask the student what they'd like to do next, thereby bringing core language in. So when you think about that, we also at AbleNet have another resource, and this is a free resource. It's called the Action Dictionary. And you'll see a, a slide that I'll refer to it um, coming up, but you can go out to the AbleNet website, type in Action Dictionary in the search field, and I'll guide you to how you download this from iBooks. It's an alternative access solution. And what happens with that alternative access solution, it gives you different methods of how you could engage the student in that action or request. So we make a lot of actions and requests for our students all day long. We do not want the student to have things done to and for them to as much degree possible. We'd like them to be independent. And that's where this action dictionary takes you. It shows you how to use AbleNet technology, different devices. Also, if you look at example four, it brings in concrete materials or maybe your picture symbols. As you get into the action dictionary, you'll note it's not always anything that's battery operated. It does have other ideas that and materials that you could bring in from your classroom. But we want our students to be actively engaged or involved. We don't want to move past them. And this is a perfect solution for that. So please note, you can download this for free. As we take a look at home and we're talking about saying or greeting right at home, we can greet parents, we can greet siblings. During instruction, your students can greet you back through your digital tool. We know not all students have equality with access, but we are hoping that eventually that will happen if this continues in any shape or form. So I'm doing the presentation today, mostly on ideas that I would be assuming you'd be presenting to your students through a digital platform where they would visually be able to see you. But also we know that for some of the individuals that we're working with, they may not have technology at home. So we have to think about individual picture symbols you potentially could send home for greeting for them to hold up or point to. Maybe you've sent home a core board. If you haven't, that might be a good idea as well. You also then, if you have the opportunity to send home the devices that the student's using in school, of course, that would be the best if you can. Um, AbleNet also has a program, it's a, called the My Way AT Kit. We've been working with several school districts who needed devices literally sent home to their students. So we literally supported the um, schools with the product, the device, uh, or I should say the device, the batteries, the action dictionary. So that's something I'll touch on at the end. However you get these devices home to the students, um, having that at home is just a continuity between school and home. Also, if you are the educator and have your own set of materials, Again, being able to show the student, activate that device on your end, brings that normalcy back to them. And that's what we're looking for here. So we think about how to greet at home. We think also as we move through in our day, how you walk into attendance next. And so we would be looking at spinning with the alternate spinner. Take a look at that action dictionary. It gives you multiple ideas of how to use this spinner in different types of activities. When you're in the classroom and you're making an overlay of students, that you can then have the students either press on this button to spin or the students can go ahead and actually have a switch plugged in. You can deal with where the students are at either visually or we can deal with them text-based as well. So you think about meeting the needs of your students where they're at. We now can have an interactive attendance opportunity or you could use this at different times of day to call on students to answer questions. Our students can be seen as leaders, whether it's during an activity in, um, sorry, whether it's during an attendance activity or whether it is at a time of day that you just want to call on them, they could be our caller. Alternative access is shown here through a switch. And then also another student that could access this with a reaching out and touching. 
if you are able to take your alternate spinner home, then you can still do that at home. If you're meeting with a large group, you could definitely do attendance this way. You could have students at home with their own device. Again, I know that we have students that are using dedicated devices as well. So you would prep them to get ready to say, that's me, I'm here. You could use a yes or a no at this point too. Um, we could have our students tell you what to do. So you could say, okay, everybody, what do I need to do? And they could all say spin. So it depends upon how you prep your devices at home remembering that we would acknowledge a movement and or a vocalization as that direction to move forward. So thinking about how we can go ahead and draw our students' attention, bringing your alternate spinner home is a great opportunity to do that. I do wanna think about though remembering the modes of communication for our students. And as we do this in class, we can do this at home. So if you think about pointing, we, need to dis we can display an item and we definitely can have that student point to it on the screen you would be able to see approximately where they're pointing. We can have someone at home clarify that point. Eye gaze could be considered as well. You think about spacing out those choices. If you're using the alternate spinner, it is a random selection tool. So you can have those two to three choices on there and students could go ahead and take a look. So you'd be following their eyes to see if they're following where the dial unlanded. Again, I mentioned this already, but I'll draw attention to the gestures and the vocalizations. We wanna assign meaning to movement and sound for responses. So if you don't have a device at home, we can look for that. If we do have a device at home, that's great. We can teach our parents how to record messages. We have had a lot of parents now that have been very excited about learning how to use the devices. And they have beyond what's happening um, in instruction, move that into their days. Um, if your student isn't able to access that top of that switch top, if you will, like on a step-by-step, -step, remember that if you send an external switch home, that switch can be held by a head or another body part to get that access. And then also don't forget that um, at home, um, often our teachers, or I should say our parents, have different types of wipe off boards with their um, children at home. So we could ask those to be brought in as well for written responses. So just a thing to think about as we go through and talk about what we can do and thinking about the alternate spinner, let's start right away after we would work on attendance, we'd like to get a little movement going for our students. So let's do some exercises. I looked on this website that you'll see below here for um, at-home workouts to do with your kids. And I found that star jumps, um, bear crawls and jumping jacks out of their list fit where I would like to work with a group of students I put in my mind, thinking about what they could do that would be easy for them or that a parent could help them do. And then also having a response. So being able to say, I'm a star, we could record that or who can roar the loudest, we could record a roar or our students could verbally produce that and then counting to a specific number or a letter for stopping. So again, we can have these um, overall options for what we're going to do first, put in picture symbols. And those of you that have access to picture symbol systems are able to make those on the fly. And I'm sure you've been doing that at home now. We can start to think about what that might look like. But remember, that's a great activity to do in your classroom as well. So think about it both and if you're at home or if you're at school. We're gonna walk into math. So as we go on this little journey, some of the examples I have are um, a little bit younger. You can think about how you might wanna move these forward with some of your older students as well. Remember un under what conditions is this possible? So if I'm going to be working on colors and I would want to think about building something like a block tower at home, if I have my alternate spinner, I can put on different colors. We can go ahead and spin again, remembering that we ask the students, what would you like me to do now? We can work on that word of spin, or you might consider moving towards the word go for common core, or sorry, for core uh, words. You also think about then I, having the blocks ready and available. And as you can work with the parent prior to, we can go ahead and build that tower. Um, we also could make a shape overlay. And again, it could be designated just with the shape and or the color, you can think about that. But what if you don't have this at home? Um, then we think about bringing in that dedicated device the student might have and asking them to navigate to their color overlay or sending home something that is a, more of a PDF like this that a parent then could work on practicing those colors and pointing to and the student would have that as a um, pseudo communication board as well. Okay, and how about a treasure hunt at home? How about the same exact overlay, but what else can we do with colors, changing it up? So again, we're gonna talk about going ahead and spinning that. And then we're gonna find something. So I can ask my students to find something green and that could be a washcloth. And then it's gonna spin again, find something yellow. It could be the shirt I'm wearing or something else in the environment. 
find something red, a towel. So again, moving back to some functional vocabulary within the home, again, prepping the parent that you're going on a treasure hunt would be important so that they can help them. And this activity might take a little time, but again, they're moving, they're motivated, they're engaged, and then you can have those deeper conversations. And just the reminder, always make sure that we have a way for a student to communicate that back. If you have a step-by-step -step and you're thinking, hmm, how would I do that if I had a step-by-step? -step? One message could say, I found this, and then they could hold that up or it could be brought. So think about the message that you would use to bring that back and start the conversation with. And remember, requests can go both ways. I can say, show me for a student, but the student could say, show me, and I could find colors, numbers, and shapes as well. So we can kind of flip it back and forth and start that rich language communication with our students. And showing visual objects now is um, you can see pretty well through these digital tools. So with your students, as long as they are in an um, area that they're going to be able to see, some of our students do have visual challenges, I understand that, but for the students that are going to be able to pick that up, and especially if you're dealing with a large or small group setting, some of us are doing one-on-one -on -one teaching or instruction, others are inviting multiple students to attend at the same time for our lessons, then you think about what we can have as visuals and how you set up your environment so it represents your teaching instructional area or a focal point for them. All right, I did add some videos today thinking about how we can count at home and count at school. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first one. Again, I mentioned I have a lot of ideas in this time. So hopefully you're, these are resonating with you and you're taking down some notes. Okay. You tell me what to put the number down. Or what number to put down? Go ahead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good job. I like how you stopped at ten. Speed counting. Awesome. All right, so we've got a great activity. We're dealing with the student being actively engaged. We're using the step-by-step -step to draw meaning and connect that number that's being put down with the actual verbal um, pronunciation of that okay. number. And then we take a look at what we could do at home. So if we have the alternate spinner, we could spin. You can also think about if you have the equals math program, some of you on the line will have that. That's an AbleNet math program. There's a digital tool that would bring up the work mats. So you'd have a number line. You can also create a number line and send it or ask the parent to do this very simply or easily. Um, we can also send home something more on the scale of the one to 10. You probably wanna add your one here for the 10 on this particular one. I just did a screenshot. So as we take a look at what we're counting, now we can move back to either spinning or using these tools. And now let's go for some functional items. Let's go for spoons. Let's go for knives, forks. What else can we use at home? Once we spin or once we select a number, what can we count? Solo cups are kind of cool. They um, are a little lightweight, but some of our students might enjoy counting those out or stacking them. And then also a number of crayons. So these things should be in the home or a parent can decide what other things they have ready and available. And they don't always have to be, as you see in the silverware, like items, but we just want to talk about counting and having students have that actual representation or concrete object for that. You may want to think about sending a, a hundreds chart home. And that actually is a nice opportunity for students to have all the numbers from one to a hundred ready and available for whatever activity you'd like to do. And then we can record in this example, like counting numbers by five, we can highlight that. If you laminate it for your parents, then you could do some things like um, highlighting around the certain row that you want to take a look on at or certain numbers with actually a visibility or wipe off marker. And then we can have that um, those numbers recorded into the step-by-step. -step. Again, being able to teach a parent how to do that, or we can share that on the screen ourselves and have that representation and modeling of the devices. I love this next example about concrete objects and looking at concepts. And then you think about if you were displaying the alternate spinner or asking a student to do this at home, this would be really easy to do something on this order when you're looking at these concepts that you're going to see of in, over, or on top. Yeah. Ooh, spin. Oh, oh, no, no. Yes. Yes. No. Nice. Oh, what did you get? Touch it. Nice. All right, catches. Go. Yeah, baby. Show me on. Yo. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, here we go. Something very simple, something very easy as taking a look at our concepts and having parents bring in actual objects that we can use to go ahead and keep that skill going. So again, it's about how are you presenting your IEP concepts? What are you using to maintain skills? And then thinking about how else you could use that spinner and or, right? Another delivery tool for working on number identification. Um, you're counting with real objects you just saw, some addition, some subtraction or multiplication. This overlay on the alternate spinner, both the inner and the outer, they do go ahead and when you turn them over, they're blank. So it provides you that opportunity to add anything you want to it. It also can lay down. So when you're back in school, if you wanted to place actual objects on that, it might be a little bit difficult to see if you're doing uh, distance learning or blended learning um, to have that face down, but definitely when a student's actually visually or in your presence, you can lay that down. Um, here, when we take a look at spin for numbers, we also, when you look at the word spin, here it does talk about how students can roll the dice and it gives you an idea even if you don't have the spinner how you could use other tools maybe a box that a student could jiggle or even in a plastic bag where you would put dice and then the student even if they drop that out of their lap the dice would roll so again this action dictionary is really important for those of us that work with students that have complex um, physical needs as well as communication needs it helps us bring our students into those activities that others do to and for them so one area that um, I wanna move into next is problem solving while we're still in math. And I have built a number of videos in for you now to take a look at uh, portions of these to think about what it looks like at home and then what it looks like at school. Um, the first one is the problem solving. So I'm gonna give you a minute to take a look at the activity, the use of manipulatives, the use of vocabulary cards, the supports that are provided to students. And then thinking about, wow, while I'm doing this at school, how does that really happen at home or how could the parents support that at home? Um, so let's start this right now. Today, our friend Marnie is very, very hungry. Did you guys have snack already? No. Did you, did you have snack this morning? No. No? So you're hungry too. Are you hungry? Well, when you're really hungry, do you want a little bit of food or do you want a lot of food? A lot of food, right? Oops. You want more? Very good. All right. Well, today it's snack time and Marnie's teacher brought in french fries. Who likes french fries? Me. Me. I love french fries. Do you like french fries, Brandon? Yeah, fries. You like french fries too? Yeah. All right. Well, um... Marnie is very hungry, so her teacher is going to give her two different plates with food on them. And we have to help Marnie so that Marnie gets the plate with more. Move! All right? Mm -hmm. You want to start, Kamari? All right. So Marnie has two plates. If you're going to give your friend Marnie some french fries, which one is the plate with more? Very good. Nice job. Let's count those french fries, okay? Good job. So as you can see here from the video, we have opportunities for students to respond. We have a high expectation they will respond. Problem solving is a tough thing for students when we deal with word problems, as we know. And there's a lot of auditory components to them, so we need to hang on to concrete. The other piece is that we do know that as we take a look at our alternate alternate assessments, both the student being assessed on it and often teaching it at school can be a little bit of a challenge. So we want to make sure that we get as much practice as possible. What you're seeing here also again is from our Equals Math program with a really dedicated view to problem solving. On the next screen what you're going to see Today. is AbleNet the AbleNet video that we put out that all of you guys have access to right now. If you haven't seen this already we have been pushing this out um, in the emails that our math um, curricular staff has created called Solving Everyday Problems. And it's a part one in the series for parents. So it's, I think it's great for ourselves too to think about all day long, but I'm only gonna show you a little bit of it because it's like six minutes long. So I am gonna ask that after, if you're interested in this, that you go ahead and watch it. And then also it's on our YouTube channel. So you can find it out there when you just go to, Able, go to YouTube and then go to AbleNet, you'll be able to find this under the AbleNet University but I'm gonna play about a couple minutes of it for the first intro and then the first example, but note that there's several more examples that you can share with parents and watch yourself. 
Welcome to the webinar training, Cause and Effect, Solving Everyday Problems. In this training, we will discuss ways that you can implement problem-solving strategies at home with everyday tasks. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the Curriculum Department at curriculum at ablenetinc.com. Let's get started. Solving problems is a big part of math. It is important for students to know how the world works when solving problems in everyday life and when learning math. Some everyday problems are related to math and some are not. The way we understand how to solve problems is about the same, whether it is how to make a smoothie or how to add two sets of books. It is most important that students have enough life experiences by watching and doing so they begin to understand when I do something, something happens. For example, gather ingredients for a smoothie. Show how many bananas and strawberries there are. Then measure the yogurt. Have your child watch as you place the ingredients in a blender. Take a photo to show what the ingredients look like in a blender. Show how to turn it on and cover your ears. Seconds later, the ingredients look very different. Compare the photo with the outcome and talk about what happened. It is most important that students have enough life experiences by watching and doing so they begin to understand when I do something, something happens. This provides students with information about the world. Later, students will be better able to make reasonable predictions of what will happen when they solve other problems, including math, because they have a better understanding of how things work in their world. Here are some additional examples around the house and yard. Depending on the activity, your child can observe or participate in one or more steps. All of these tasks begin with deciding how to do the task, which action to take, and what tool to use. Let's move on to a more challenging activity by showing choices before solving a problem. In math, thinking about choices and what might happen supports students as they tackle problems and make decisions about what to do, what tools to use, and what the outcome might look like for each of those. For example, the countertop is too messy to cook. Here is an example of an everyday problem you can solve with your child by giving choices about the action and tool to use to solve this problem. I want to make dinner. I don't have enough room on the counter to cut vegetables. This counter has too many things on it. What can I do? I can cover the counter with a blanket, or I can put the utensils back into a container. Ask your child, what should I do? Cover the counter with a blanket, or put away the utensils? Let me think. When I cover the counter, it doesn't look like I could cut vegetables on the counter. The blanket just covers up the utensils. But when I clean up the utensils, it looks like there's plenty of room to cut the vegetables. Ask, what do you think? Cover the counter with a blanket or put away the utensils? This looks like it's too hard to cut. I would not use a blanket. Now the counter is cleared. I have enough room to cut vegetables. This solves the problem better than covering it with a blanket. The problems and choices I showed you are ways for your child to learn about two steps of problem solving. One, choosing an action, cover or put away, and two, choosing a tool, blanket or container for putting utensils away. So you can see here the thoughtful approach to thinking about problem solving, not only how it should be done at home, but when we're at school, thinking about how we go ahead and help our students choose those actions, choose those tools to solve. Um, again, it's something that always has been a challenge, both at the teaching of it and then having the retention of it as well for students. So please note, again, out on the AbleNet YouTube channel, um, you'll be able to find this and watch those other functional activities at home and have our parents really be feeling like they are working while they're doing their functional activities at home. So they're working on their, with their child on their education. Um, there's, a, as I mentioned, a lot of information right now about how Welcome parents are struggling with trying to figure out um, how to get everything done on top of educating their child. And then if you have a child that has um, alternate challenges, it becomes even harder. So with that said, please feel free to pass this on to everybody else and take a peek at it yourself. Um, I'd like to move into computer and iPad access as we move through the day. Many of you are using different tools in your classrooms. Um, so we'll start with the computer, thinking about the hitch. Now, the hitch is an alternative access piece to our keyboard. So you'll notice space, enter, left click, right click. In each one of these areas here, it will provide us access to a keyboard. So when our students aren't able to physically reach out and touch the space bar, 
just plugging in a switch into the bottom port, the correct port, and activating the switch will allow that action on the keyboard or the key, have that key command happen in whatever you are going to take a look at. Um, what's been the other piece here to note is that we do have wireless switches. So wireless switches also will work. Also, if you're going to be using a switch, you potentially may need to mount it other than having a student reach out for that. So that's a whole lot of information that if you need more information on mounting of switches or other switches that would be more specialty, please reach back to AbleNet. We have a number of those that we can help you with. This would be when we think about at school, what we can do and how we can set up our computer stations if we have them in the classroom. You may take a look at different alternative access methods. A student might need a um, keyboard that just has different highlighted keys for vowels and consonants. Or, and again, you can take a look at students that are distracted, making sure they have headphones. In our scenario where you see the hitch, which then you plug into the computer with the USB, we're using a wireless switch called the Jelly Beamer. And then that allows for a cause and effect opportunity, or more importantly, an independent activity for a child to work on at the computer station and then we're dealing with involving rich language for them as well. I created a short little video for you to take a look at right now. Um, full disclosure, I did this on my own. I'm going to be accessing the program. I'm going to move a screen ahead. So here's a video. First, that... Sorry, screen ahead and then I'm going to go back. I love, love, love Tar Heel Reader. It is the free resource from the University of North Carolina Center for Literacy and Disabilities. And so this is a way that students will be able to go ahead and find a book and read it independently or in your classrooms, you can go ahead and work on writing books and publishing them. So I want you to watch my video and see how um, you can hook this up to access and read Tar Heel Reader. And then I did add a little bit about gaining at the end. It's around four minutes. So just get yourselves comfortable and take a look at how this can be accessed for your students. So here's a video that is going to show you how to use the Hitch 2. Uh, Hitch has, as you can see, the different key commands that would be on your keyboard. And we are going to use the switch ports to plug in a variety of switches. This is a USB device, so we're just gonna go ahead and plug it in on the side. Get that in there. And as it's going in, you'll notice that the lights are moving back and forth on the device itself. And it selected the row with space, enter, left click, right click, and double click because I have Tar Heel Reader up on the site. So what you can do if you wanted to change this to any of the other functions, you just go ahead and press the button at the top and then you can move it. But it actually self-selects. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to plug a switch in. I have set up here, there's either a wireless system, there's also an opportunity to plug in a corded switch. So whatever would be more to your liking, you can do that as well. So you can see the two systems that I have here. So let's go ahead and plug in our corded switch into what is the space port. And then we are going to go ahead and get this set up for our student. So we're going to, let's today go ahead, we can look for um, planets. Let's search for that. So Tar Heel Reader is that free site that many of you already know. It is available to get pre-recorded, or I should say pre-recorded, but pre-made books that have a synthesized voice to them. When we go to planets and hit search, you'll notice that the screen changes and we have a variety of books. Many books are out there. There is many opportunities to look for different type of speech, colors, etc. cetera, um, that can change page and text. Again, this is free. Let's go today to the moon. And the goal would be that the student would be able to read the story independently using a switch. So the key is to get your cursor down on the area. Here it would be this location where it says next and then have the switch positioned in such a way that the student's going to be able to activate the switch and then also, or thereby, turning the page. Now, I've just set it up today here on my computer. Obviously, for most students, it probably wouldn't be here, but then again, it might, depending upon if they couldn't get to the space bar. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate the switch. Uh, the moon can be seen from almost anywhere on Earth. But sometimes the moon doesn't look whole. 
So you'll see every time I go ahead and activate the switch, it go ahead and it turns the pages or advances the page this forward. Is the moon reflects light from the sun. Thereby providing the opportunity for independent reading for students. So when the moon is in a position that only reflects some light, we see less of the moon as the stories are read. So again, you can go ahead and choose any story. It's pretty simple and fast forward. Another site that I really like that I'll take a little bit of time to share with you is called Shiny Learning. I do not um, have any type of personal connection to, to this or to the Tar Heel Reader. I just like them. You can get a seven day free trial of this. And what I like is being able to overlay our communication with this. So we have the crazy chicken not only would I overlay communication with this, but it's also for math as well. I'll bring it a little bit more forward here. And again, this is a way that we can have some things set up here. It gives you a little bit of tools underneath, so you have a little bit of control once you start play. And you get all of that wonderful sounds. And the goal is to activate the switch and get the egg into the basket. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go on my keys and I'm gonna turn that off and quiet it so you guys can hear me. So the goal, again, is to get the egg in the basket, which I did. Now I can count how many eggs I have. I can go ahead and have that communication board so when it cracks, it, we can say, oh no, deal with our core language. We can also talk about if the chicken's moving from left to right. And again, it, there is some value in not having the volume on. But again, it just shows you how switch access is so easy with this. And it's all set up very easy and independently through using the hitch switch interface. Okay. So you've had your live demo for a um, recorded demo for the Hitch. I really love this product and I think it works beautifully with this, especially when we're looking for independent reading opportunities. Again, we could assign a book to a parent at home and they could go ahead and have their student read it to them. They could interact. We could give them other opportunities to engage with that. Um, once you know the tool itself. So be sure to take a look at Tar Heel Reader. And if you're not using switch interfaces with students that potentially would benefit from them, think about that. Um, this is also a student actually working with the hitch and reading a story. So this is a high school teacher that has set up a lab. I'm just gonna give you a few seconds of this. Do you want it read to you? Okay. My name is Mark Twain. And I'm going to tell you a story. Go forward. Okay, you need to turn the page, Cole. It's right here. Thank you. So again, I'm talking about students that have very significant physical cognitive disabilities being able to engage. The goal would be that Kalel would be able, once he's practiced enough, to go read a story on his own. And depending upon what we have happening with our um, programs that we've chosen. Some do give a notification to advance, others don't. So again, it's about the software that you're choosing. Okay, let's move ahead. If you don't have a switch and hitch interface, what do you do? Can you still do this? Yes, of course you can. We can then take an action and or um, a signal from a student. So again, we want to overlay our technology. We could ask the student to go ahead and tell us to turn the page. They could actually take, if you had a switch or you just said, um, touch this, get a coaster or something, touch this, you could do that action. So you're simulating kind of that switch action. So we could tell our parents to do that at home. Thereby, when they come back to school, if you haven't sent your hitch home, they still are getting that motor patterning, right? A yes, no signal. So now even we can help them when we're showing them something on the screen for that turn the page, or they could have their device that said turn the page, or again, assigning movement as a response. So just remember how those modes of communication could be bringing in this into um, the realm so they're still going to be able to be practicing. Uh, in the PowerPoint, you're going to be able to see different sites that I like. There's a lot of them out there. Your search on the uh, web browser should be free, switch accessible software, and you'll come up with the same search and more than what I've put here for you to try different things like that that are free. Note some do have free trials and then they ask you to purchase. PowerPoint works great. You could think about attendance, vocabulary words, turning the pages. If you're using unique learning systems, go ahead and turn down the sound record that on a step-by-step um, -step and then have the students turn the pages there. Don't use all the tools that they provide you. If your students really 
need to have more of that interaction and engagement, overlay it with the tools from AbleNet, you're gonna have a great experience in the classroom. Um, so you saw computer access, now what about um, switch access? So yes, you can use the Bluetooth and you can set up Tar Heel Reader to be used with um, the Bluetooth, but you need to know about recipes. So Bluetooth is the switch that's here and you're able to pair that to your iPad and then you're able to create a recipe. This is all done within the Apple iOS system. So what I would encourage you to do is to go out to the AbleNet website, do a little research about the Bluetooth wireless switch. Note that because it can pair to an iPad, you're gonna have access to the iPad. That presentation, if you will, about access to iPads is totally different and I wanted to bring that up. If any of you are interested in something like that, at the end of the session, please feel free to reach back and we can do sessions like this offline with your groups in your schools. Um, we can set something up this summer if you still have um, school hours or we can do something in the fall, but we can go through something on this order as well. But Tar Heel Reader with a wireless switch does work on the iPad. All righty. Okay, so at school, let's go back. We're still in ELA, you guys. There's so many ideas and we haven't really moved out of our ELA. We got opening, we got math in. Let's go to ELA, vocabulary. Let's take a look at when we're going to be able to read this vocabulary word. This says happy. So all of the students who want to say happy, every time you touch the step-by-step, -step, typically it plays a different message. Well, if you know this little tip, if you press this button in the back and it's just a tap, it's not a long press, don't put it into record mode. It's when you're in play mode, if you tap it, it will move, um, it will actually lock it and not move on to the next message. So I can record all my vocabulary words and I can bring up the one I want at the right time for my students. So I'm gonna be able to have the students all say happy because I've touched that little button in the back. Once that's done, I'm gonna to touch it again. I'm gonna play the next word, make sure I get it set so it's locked. All the students get to say the next one. So it's a nice way to engage your students with a vocabulary activity. Again, those of you that might be using the ULS system and you have this last page for communication, send that home, have your parents cut it up, make a matching game. You have similar here either on your overlay or you can have your voice output devices or the students if you sent those home. Think about how that can work so that you can play those games at home and encourage communication as well. And then again, that's a matching activity. So now as you take a look on match, you'll see that the alternate spinner shows up here, but also it shows up in the way of picture symbols and in the way of voice output devices. This helps you really understand how to bring technology in throughout the day. Those of you lucky enough to have devices that have two messages that can play or activate battery operated toys can make this great opportunity to do book choices through the actual object and also then something that might move or draw more motivation and engagement. But remember at home, something as simple as just making two choices and reminding parents how important that is can happen. Back to thinking about at school, how we can go ahead and read a story. We can record either a pre or a pre-made book. So I say a pre-published book or a book that a student creates and they can read the story to you. Again, thinking about at home, the student could use the device. We could have, we can model that device and we think about modes of communication. So maybe we don't have a device and we want the students to say, turn the page or want them to answer a question. We can direct their eyes to make choices via picture symbols we might hold up or the parent might hold up. So again, lots of different ways when we remember those modes of communication to help our parents help their student actively engage. And I do refer to parents, although I know there's other caregivers, et cetera, that are working with our students at home. So just please note that. Um, here, we take a look at a picture walk. We do this at school. We can do the same thing at home. We show the picture and the student can go ahead and let us know what they're seeing on the screen. I may have that step-by-step -step at home if I don't. It might be me acknowledging a student that is made a vocalization and I might activate the step-by-step -step or I might take that as what they see on the screen and then talk about what's in the, on that particular picture page. And again, I always keep bringing up the fact that modeling these devices brings that sense of normalcy to students. And then when we transition back to school, again, we're just, they're gonna go back and say, oh yes, that they have a greater chance, I should say, of feeling comfortable and that things are the same because they've been using like materials and they've been hearing your voice and you've been interacting with them. 
um, thinking about repeated line books, you have to go out to this site if you love reading to your kids, and we all should. AACintervention.com has an amazing resource that has tons of repeated line books, and we can take that line that is repeated in every story, put it on a Big Mac, put it on a talking brick, or put it on a step-by-step. -step. Just, just record once. You don't need to put up more messages than that. And then our students have a job during that time. You can be reading the story. They can go ahead and read it with their device. Now, I am talking a lot about using devices, but I'm just making the assumption that if you have students that are verbal, that you would be asking them to go ahead and verbally state what we're saying that we recorded into the device. And especially if you're doing kind of um, all of your students in one group, you may be asking some students to use their device and other students to verbally chat with you. Um, I'm just gonna give you a second to go ahead and read about other things that you could think about for offering to your parent or what you could suggest or what you could then provide for your students to do at home. There truly is so much that can be put in a functional way, as you see here, but then leads back to your IEP goals. Please think about creating a home activity schedule with your parents about something that they can do. Again, too much sometimes is too much. And we've noticed that for our parents, we have to make sure that they're feeling comfortable and safe and secure with their students at home as well. And so if you do something, you can literally create the schedule with the parents. You could put a number of these different opportunities here that you see on the alternate spinner and you could spin for them. If you didn't have a spinner, you could put them in a bag and pull them out. And then we could create this and send this home to the parents. So you could create this with the students and then you could send it home to the parent. And if you watch the screen, it's gonna change. So this would be the first week. And my suggestion would be to make a week at a time. Don't give them a full month. So we can practice a greeting. Oh, going back to the first slide you saw, right? Um, can you draw a, draw a picture and can you name the items? Also go down to Friday where it says increase the word of the use of the word go. We can think about increasing that use of core language. Then let's go ahead and make a new opportunity to have a home activity schedule. So parents can focus on one thing a day that they can do at any time or at maybe a specific time if it's around dinner time. Chances are they're gonna get a more sense of comfort level with themselves, with their child as well, as far as what they can expect or request beyond what we, you're doing with them on the screen or in your interactive session. And I just changed it again, if you didn't notice. All right, I talked about instructional plan and the fact that we need to think about how we can include technology in our lessons from the very beginning. When you think about your lesson plan, this is like the simplest tool ever you can create with a spreadsheet or you literally can just create it on your own. Um, think about your schedule, think about the activity, Think about the tool and then think about your students in the way of their motor and verbal ability, right? What can they do? And if they can't, we think about how can they, right? So how can Josh do these things when we deal with more of a challenge maybe than with Mia, right? So we think about what we do. So put in what you're planning to do in your activity. Thinking about your students, give them jobs. Give them ways that they are going to participate or better said, what is your expectation of that student, of every student during this activity? For some, it's gonna be an actual job. Like Josh might choose the photo, Mia is gonna hand it. The other students, their goal is gonna to be to respond at that time to attendance, right? Or to identifying. So you think about every student as you go through and then you find the tools that are gonna be needed to make sure that Josh is gonna be able to go ahead and spin the spinner so that he can have the, with, with the student overlay, we can go ahead and have Mia pick up that student's photo and bring it to a student so that student can say I'm here, either with the device or verbally. So very simple tool. You can think about in the handout, take a little more time to look at it. It may or may not meet what you currently do. So you um, populate this with what makes sense for you. It'll really help you go ahead and bring that technology in. Let's keep communication going. Let's think about how we can keep communication going at home. When you have a device, we'll look at this. We have the opportunity to say, go fast, go slow, turn my chair around. These are some things that are happening at home right now. Big Macs were sent home to a number of students and the speech therapist, when she meets with the students, she shows them her uh, bird sanctuary here and they are able when a bird flies in to say they say a bird and then the mom's right there you can see Kathy right here 
and she is working with her daughter. And so they have the opportunity to change this message as they change their different activities at home. I have another teacher out of Florida that has alternate spinner at home. She was able to go to school to bring her materials home. And I do wanna give you just a um, little bit of time to read this because this is what she shared with Abel and that is what she's doing at home. And I would like you to pay attention to the fact, I'll just put my arrow here about her daughter. So go ahead. So again, when we're talking about a sense of normalcy, the teachers that had, were able to get into their classroom and bring, bring their materials home and show them and share them and then have the students take a look, doing those activities that we did at school and we were doing them as we're teaching within our distance learning approach, we have to think about that for blended learning as well. What are students seeing in school? How are we gonna position that and present that? There's a mini duck lesson that she did with the alternate spinner. So she just had the two plates and as the um, spinner spun, then they were counting and she also then had a dice as well. But telling parents, please get items from your home so that we can go ahead and do some counting activities. Another um, teacher kicking it up a little bit was doing, reading the book Duck on Bike and he was doing character analysis. So he just made some symbols at home and he put them on the overlay. And then he also, um, shared the story about he was doing a group and his students kept answering all at the same time. So he had another overlay that he made and you can see here that this one was a, a plastic, he had it actually um, laminated and then he just puts it over the overlay and it has Velcro on it. So then he takes the items off and he puts on his students, so he has two overlays is my point, and then he'll put the overlay on to pick the student who's gonna answer the question. So first he picks the student, then he goes ahead and he puts on the um, other overlay about who's going to, so he knows who's gonna answer and talk about the character analysis. Think about something like this as well for your students. Um, make a sticker overlay, and again, if it's not with the alternate spinner, you might pull them out of a bag, et cetera, or making choices, you could have a choice board. But I'm thinking about making a weekly um, chart to show them th that they're doing a good job. We can send the sticker home to the student in an actual letter. You could send them, or you can make a dig digital sticker sheet and email that to the parents at the end of the week. Do something about um, providing them with the same type of excitement and engagement that you get when they're in school. Because we tell, tell them how what a great job they do. They are not having kind of that same interaction. So this is another way to give them all that confidence. And I just did a sample letter. So something as simple as this, fold it up, put in the mail, and then have sent home with those stickers. And then the sticker that you have could either be your digital one, or if you actually do have stickers, you could just tape them on so a student could then put them in a sticker book themselves. So again, thinking of some different ways we can actively engage our students um, and then connect them to you as well. All right. We are gonna think about lunch and we're thinking about cooking and we're thinking about what we do at school. So at school, we talk about presenting a lunch menu the lunch menu can be placed on the wall. Any student can walk forward now and press this Big Mac and they're gonna be able to read what's here. This is gonna move on a daily basis. So we record the Big Mac or whatever device you've chosen here. And now when you ask what is for lunch today, any student has access. That's what we're talking about. And often cooking at school is something like, we think about using the product called the Power Link to do maybe um, chocolate chip cookies and we can have students that access the switch with a mount by their head or another student might be accessing it with their, their hand with the switch. We think about what else happens when we're in our schools and what positions our students are in and how they can gain access to these great activities. Well, what happens when we're at home? These same types of things can happen. We definitely can be involved in cooking activities at home, but look at when you're thinking about the access method of this device, we do have that you can have a corded switch or if you have a wireless switch, the receiver's built in. We can make orange juice, we can make cookies, we can do all of those things, yet look here what else we could do. We can turn on lights and run an electric stapler, a paper shredder, a pencil. All of these activities that are considered maybe a little more functional and or fun that our students could have access to at home. So we're looking to have other things happening. Now, all of these can also happen at school and you can have them set up so that they're fully accessible. When we think about the power link, we think about access sometimes to um, 
fun and engage in engagement. And then so you might then leverage that into play. So I'm going to move in a way here and share some examples about play and I'll leverage back into the power link in a minute where we're talking about all of this is active engagement. We can overlay that rich language and enjoyment. I'm not so much about just a battery operated toy for battery operated toy sake. I'm about thinking about how we're going to go ahead and leverage our devices so that we're meeting all of these wonderful SLP goals that we have, our speech goals of initiation, turn taking, maintaining a topic, adding the devices into an activity that you would be doing anyways in your classroom so that we have this opportunity is where we're at. Thinking about how we can add a voice output device to the alternate spinner but actually right now we're going to be using that as a switch and a voice output device and we can work on bowling for numbers, letters, names, vowels, and vocabulary simply by activating the blow dryer. And we're going to blow down the pins, which then would have a card on them that would represent one of these content areas that are in your um, repertoire in your IEP. We could do this at home. We could do this at school. Active engagement is where we're at. You can also think about using a fan or a blow dryer to paint by blowing lightweight balls on an art project as well. So here you can think about using a step by step with a cord. It will run a battery operated toy. We can draw because we've taped this around. We can go ahead and remember that we're going to maybe need to provide a different overlay for communication for students to choose colors because we always want to have the communication overlaid in every one of our ideas. Thinking about fun things for painting. We can paint, we can do the same thing. Here we have a student that's going to go ahead and paint a tree. We just put that tree here and now we're going to run that paint spinner with the voice output device and we can have a communication message that matches there. Don't forget, we have to have a way to make choices as well. Thinking about music, again something during the day, rich language. Our younger kids, we may be looking at something like teddy bear, teddy bear, touch the ground. You can see this step by step. I'm trying to circle it right here for you. We can go ahead first and make a choice on the overlay and you could just literally practice all of these actions. You could match them to that picture symbol. And then when we sing the song, we would have already had practice as to what that action is. There's one minute left and I believe that we can play this because I have a minute left and I want to leave you with this. Um, whether at home or at school, music is so important. And so I'd like to share Amber with you. When I start, I hope that you're going to be able to see the fact that um, as this moves through, the speech therapist is actually putting on a mount so that she's going to be able to access this device. Hopefully that wasn't too blurry for you. Um, and then we're just going to let you see a few seconds of this here. All right, Amber. Hello, everybody. It's your turn. Time. Hello, everybody. It's Job. Active engagement, motivation, that's what we're talking about for our students. Um, I do want to share one more thing with you, so I'm going to pop back here. AbleNet does have a program that is called the My Way program. It is a way that you can build a kit for either at home or it's at school, so it can be used in our classrooms. It is a kit of technology, so basically you pick it. We include the batteries. There's a carrying tote for this. There's also the action dictionaries included on a USB. Um, we have technical support to support you, I support as well if needed, and then we have free shipping. So if you're thinking about how am I going to do this, how am I going to get tech into my classrooms, what am I going to do, and you're being asked to make a plan for distance learning, AbleNet, myself, we're, we're here to support you in that. And then, again, there's a number of products that we have that are the most popular, with the iTalk2 being our most recent product, but truly anything is available that you would need from our portfolio please take a look at your handout. You've been given some additional slides today that are more just ideas that you'll see that um, talk about other times of day that you can impact communication for your students and that you could do activities at home and at school, such as asking for medication, um, things like that. So take a peek, there's some additional slides. And then also, I think these are really nice 
resources that I've left you with that can tell you about articles that you can read fast about co-teaching with parents, some ideas for special educators. And then the video um, is a uh, PBS video that talks about our parents and how they're feeling. So we really have to help support them as we take a look at distance learning, blended learning, and then how is that transition to the classroom gonna happen and your plans for that at school. So with that said, I'm Mary Sagstetter from AbleNet. I hope that you have enjoyed our session today. I welcome you to get back with me with any questions that you may have and or schedule some more time with me so we can chat further for your schools and your students. Thanks so much.